back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to build our templates for um, our view. Um, as before, when we're talking about request and response, we got the request from the URLs, which we did in the previous tutorial. Now we need to send out a response, and that comes from our views and in um, the format of an HTML document as list of posts. So that's our ultimate goal in this tutorial is to uh, build list of posts and be able to display that to the user or the client. Um, so let's get started. But before we do that, I forgot I want to mention something. Um, I'm not a web designer, so I'm not going to sit here and write CSS code and all that stuff and make some cool little website for you guys. That's not what I do. Uh, so if you guys have a CSS framework, uh, I know a lot of guys use Bootstrap on these uh, tutorials. If you guys want to use something different, let me know before the next video, uh, which will be posted tomorrow before I start working on the next one. Just let me know if you want to use like foundations or I don't know, there's like 50 of them out there. If you have one you prefer and you want to see, uh, I'll take whatever the consensus is. Just leave a comment on this video and we'll go with that. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I want to do is build like a, um, we got to uh, build out our file structure for our templates. That's what I'm looking for. So what we're going to do is create a file or, or a directory over here. So a new folder. So right click on blog. It's going to go in blog and it's going to be called templates. Dates like that. And you make a new directory. And this has to be called templates for one reason. If you go into your settings file in here, there's a um, variable called templates. You come down here to app errors and it says true. Well, right here is um, when we go through the process of sending a response, Django, when it gets that request, is going to go look in the templates um, variable and go through all these um, arguments, if you will, and say, okay, where can I find these templates? Well, we got app there set to true. So it's going to actually go into our app, all right, app directory, and look for a f uh, directory called templates. Inside that, and then if it finds templates, it's going to look through there for our actual um, um, uh, HTML document that we're going to use as a response. Okay. So with that being said, the next thing I want to do is we're going to add a couple more directories in here because I like to keep my, uh, my folders pretty organized so I can find things. So the next one's going to be blog. So let's add another folder called blog. All right. Inside that blog folder, we're going to add an HTML document. So we're going to do new file, and we're going to call this one command s to save it. And we're going to call this one base.html. So I'll slide this down over here so you guys can see it. Base.html. All right. And base.html, what that is, is that is like our overall template. All right. Everything's going to be basically built off base. HTML. Base HTML is going to hold our overall like header, footer, and whatnot in it. And then our rest of our directories are just going to change certain portions of the page. So it's our overall template. So that's what base HTML is. Now let's go back up to uh, blog and let's create one more directory in here or a new folder, if you will. And we're going to call that post. All right. And this is where um, our specific post. Uh, templates are going to go. So, for example, um, our list of posts will go in post, and like a detailed uh, post um, template would go in there. So, in here, let's create another file, and we're going to call this one, do command save again, and we'll call this one list underscore of underscore post dot html. All right. So we'll save that. So with that being said, now we got our file structure pretty much set up, I believe. Yeah. So we got that pretty much set up. So what we first want to do is come back to base.html. And since we don't have um, a CSS thing set up yet or how we're going to style this page, I'm just going to go with basic HTML right here. All right. And then once we figure out how we're going to design it, then we'll go from there. So what do we need in the HTML document? Well, first things first is the, the doc type. So doc type HTML, all right? And then we need HTML. 
Alright. And then we need a head section. Alright. Inside that head section, we're gonna have title. Now, if you guys are not familiar with HTML, um, some great tutorials out there. I, I, I can't really sit here and explain to you how to write HTML, but um, I suggest you go read up on that and make your life a lot easier. Um, all right, so this is our base HTML. Basically, this is how our site's gonna be laid out. You know, we got HTML, we got head, we got title in here, and we got body. All right, now this is, bare minimums, all right? It's not what we're gonna go and say, hey, this is what we're gonna live live with, but we're gonna eventually change this around. We're just trying to get something going here to make sure our, re our request and response work. We're not really designing to, you know, blow people away right now. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and first off, add in a, um, uh, template tag and what a template tag is is um, basically a way for us to input dynamic um, data into our templates all right so there's template tags and there's template variables that come with Django's template engine it's a lot of templates in there um, so we'll learn a lot about these as we work through these tutorials but you're gonna see some that we use quite often and this is one of them and this is called a block a block of content so we'll do curly braces all right then we're going to do percent sign and percent sign again and then inside there we're going to do block title all right and then over here we're going to do another curly brace another curly brace and two percent symbols and in between them we're going to do end block all right i'll explain to you in a second what this is going on here um block stands for like a block of content so whatever we say we want to insert into this block, which you'll see once we start working with list of posts, we'll insert into here. Then we give it a name, title, so we can match this up somewhere else in our um, uh, HTML document to import the content. And then we say end block, basically saying, hey, that's the end, don't add any more. All right, so this is where the title of our page is gonna go. And that's gonna come in dynamically, pending our, um, our views or what's in our other HTML document. Okay. Um, and then we need one more down the body here. And this is going to be our block content. So with our list of posts, this is where our list of posts are going to go. So we're going to do another block uh, tag here. And it's going to be uh, the percent symbols inside the curly bracket. And this time we're going to say block content. All right. And notice the two are different because if I name this block content up here and this block content down here, well, when it goes to grab the um, template tags, it's going to get confused and not know where to put it. So you got to kind of decipher somewhat, but a lot of the time you're going to be using something like block content in most of your body of your, your site because that's, you know, what you're trying to do is inject content. So anyhow, and block. And you can call this anything you want. You don't have to call it content. You can call it ABC or Miller Lite or uh, whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> so that's our base HTML as it is now. Now, this is not what it's going to look like when we're done, but this is what it is to get us to actually showing the post. All right, so let's move over to our list of posts now. And this is where the stuff gets fun. All right, so... First things first, we have to say this is part of base HTML, or this is extends base.html. So what we're going to do is use the extends tag, extends, and we're going to, in there, we're going to, in a string, we're going to say blog.base.html, all right, because that's where the base HTML file is, it's in blog and it's base.html. So you gotta say where it's at, okay? So this is just indicating that this extends base HTML, which means it's part of it, all right? <clears throat> um, for now, we're gonna need block title, right? Because so we need block title up here. We need block title. So in here, we're gonna do block title. So we'll do block like this 
And then we'll do the ending end block. We'll just do end block. Alright. And right now I'm just gonna hard code in a title to this. So I'm gonna say list oops, I spell nice list list of blog post. We'll change this dynamically shortly. Um, and then we're gonna do our block content. So uh, before we do our blog content, just so you understand what's going on here is when we extend base HTML and then we use block title, um, this is this right here is going to be injected into between there, right? And that's how it's going to be displayed when uh, a user visits our website. All right, so back to what we're doing here. Now we got to do block content. So we're going to put in some more block tags here, block content. Now we're not going to put these next to each other and below each other here. So we're going to have to now use a different type of block tag once I write and block. Ignore that. <clears throat> All right. So now if you think about it, when we look at our views, we're getting a, a list of um, posts, correct? A list of blog posts. So they're, they're stored in a variable, or actually, they, they're, stored in a, they're stored in a variable. So there's a bunch of posts in there, correct? So <clears throat> we got to iterate through them to go ahead and print out each or return each post. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the for loop tag. And if you guys are familiar with with uh, Python, it's the same thing. So for post in post, like this, all right? And then when I do these, I like to go ahead and use put my n4 in right away so I don't forget it because it drives me nuts when you do forget it and nothing works. All right, so now we're going to loop through our post. And for each post, it's going to do something, right? So let's go ahead and do uh, some H2 tags. This will hold our title of our blog post. And we'll do um, inside here, we're going to do a uh, variable, all right, a template tag variable. And that's indicated by two curly braces. So <clears throat> when we do a for loop, uh, this post is our temporary variable. This is our actual variable. So every time it loops, our temporary temporary variable is going to hold that current post. So in here, we're going to say post title. All right. So we want our title. So it's going to return us the title. Um, and then down here, we'll do p tags. All right. And we'll do something like uh, written by. And then we're going to put another variable in here. And we'll do post author. All right, so now we're returning the author who wrote this blog post on, and then we're gonna do a date. So we'll do post.published, because that's our published date. All right, and then, I don't know, we'll do some kind of horizontal rule here. That's an H4 horizontal rule, just the line that goes across to separate the post from the content. And now we got our our uh, post content that we're going to put down here. Now I'm not going to put that in any tags for now. So we'll just put it as post dot content. So now we're getting our content. And since this is our, our, um, uh, our list of posts or archive or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to truncate the words. I'm going to limit the words to like 40. I don't want every blog post showing up here with, you know, 90,000 words. That wouldn't look good. So we're going to truncate to 40. So how we truncate is uh, the pipe symbol. All right. Then we're going to write truncate words colon 40. All right. So it's going to truncate it to 40 words. Then we're going to uh, use the pipe symbol one more time. We're going to enter line breaks. And what line breaks is, if we didn't enter line breaks, our, all our sentences would run um, together and there'd be no returns or, yeah, no returns. It's going to insert line breaks, okay? So we'll go ahead and save that. <clears throat> now, this all might be overwhelming to you guys because this is the first time you're seeing it. Don't stress. We're going to do a lot of these 
and I'll try to walk you through it. And I'm trying to keep it quick because I do know these videos get a little long, but if you guys have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube. Now, anyhow, now we got our response and we got our request. Now we can fire up the server and see if this actually all works. So I'm going to clear my screen here and I'm going to get out of the shell I believe I'm in. And we'll do Python 3 manage.py run server. All right. So up in here, oh, before I get ahead of myself and make sure we don't have any errors, because that would be embarrassing. Man, this is taking low. There we go, no errors, okay. So I'm gonna copy that URL, open this up, fire this guy in here, hit return, and wait for my trusty old browser to catch up to us. Oh crap, blah, uh, page not found. Well, this is, this is not actually an error, but <clears throat> uh, I did that intentionally. Um, this is the debug page. I don't believe we've seen it yet, but this is cool about Django. It says it has one of the most impressive debugging pages. It says page not found. Request method get, and it says URL, blah, blah, blah. And then using URL conf defined in cms.urls, where is that at? We go cms, here's cms.urls.py. All right. <clears throat> then we'll go back to our, and see what it says. Django tried the, these URL patterns in this order. Um, admin, so admin would actually look like that, all right? And then the next one it tried was blog, which looks like that. But guess what happened? The current URL didn't match any of these. Well, yeah, because we didn't say in our, oops, I clicked on the wrong one. We didn't say in our URLs here, when you come to our URLs, that we wanted something to look like this. Oops, actually like this. So if I go like that, save that, go back and refresh my page, wherever my freaking browser went, there we go. There we go, there's our blog post, and it's right on our homepage. But I didn't want that. But I was kind of showing you guys how easy it is to just manipulate and understand what's going on with your site. So back in here, let's go ahead and change this back to blog because this is what I ultimately want. Oh, no. Blog like that. It's what I ultimate, ultimately want right there. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and I'm going to get the error 404 page again. Once the server wakes back up. There we go. We get the 404 page and then I'm just going to put in backslash blog and it's going to take me to our blog post and there's our blog post all right there's the title um, there's our written by admin then the published date and then our content so these are all the blog posts I have had so basically we're making headway we we got a request from the user and we sent out a response they got what they wanted there um, <clears throat> So once again, uh, if you guys have any uh, ideas on what framework you want to use in uh, with this uh, um, CMS that we're building, let me know CSS framework that is, um, and we'll we'll try to use that. Otherwise, uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and spice this up a little bit better because um, right now we would like also to be able to click on the title and go to the full blog post, which we can't do yet. So we'll get there. Um, also make this look a little bit better because it looks like crap. Um, and while that's all being said, we're going to have to give it a little bit more, uh, featured features for our site actually, because, it, you know, blog posts ain't going to cut it for me. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you got any questions, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it. See you.